the string puller. Diseases, terrorist attacks, and riots were spreading all around the world, causing the number of homeless people to rise sharply, as well as increasing the number of people living in poverty. After leaving the school, Sam took care of her burns before the four continued on their journey. Ah, we still got the treasures from the White Rider's castle. It might help some people, said Sam. The four went down to the subway station, where the homeless gathered the most. All of them sat alongside the hallways. Their eyes were hollow and soulless. Sam put a pearl into the hand of a woman who was taking care of her child. Everyone watching had their eyes sparkle like stars in the sky. They rushed up to the Crusaders. Sam generously gave out lots and lots of treasures from her magic bell. Those soulless eyes quickly filled with greed. The crowd pushed and bumped against each other. One man, after just receiving a pearl necklace from Sam, was instantly stopped by some people outside. They beat him and stole the necklace. The crowd continued to jostle each other. Stop them, Gemma yelled and charged towards the thieves. She quickly grabbed the men who were trying to steal from a poor woman. The two men were tossed away before angrily crawling up and rushing at Gemma to fight back. As they were just normal human beings, they were no match for her, but they outnumbered her, and the fact was that she didn't want to harm these men, making the scene even more chaotic. On the other side, James and Michael were not doing much better. Seeing the treasure come out from nowhere, greed rose up in the hearts of these men. They huddled around, taking whatever they could. As soon as James and Michael separated one group, another would rush in and steal the goods. Sam furiously recalled her magic silver bell and shouted, Quiet! Settle down! But her shout was lost in the chaos of the crowd. A bunch of tall, bulky men angrily shouldered their way through the crowd, surrounding Sam. Give us the bell and we might spare you. Sam looked at them with a smirk. She began cracking her knuckles. Then, quick as lightning, she lowered her balance and swept her legs, sending the arrogant men falling to the ground. The others madly charged at her, but with her swiftness, she took them down one by one. After a few brief seconds, those angry men were all eating dust on the floor. Sam lightly tapped the leader's cheek and merrily said, You should practice more. Then she turned around, about to call her friends to stop what they were doing and to get out of there. But then she saw a young man dying to hold a diamond in his hand. A tall man lifted the young man up and strangled him while trying to take the diamond. Sam flew up and kicked the man down to the ground. Giving him another kick, she coldly said, Go away. She helped the young man up. Using a much sweeter voice, she asked, Are you okay? Just when she looked up, she saw a man about five feet tall with a squinty face and long messy hair who was talking with a bunch of men standing there and pointing at her. Sensing something was wrong, the guy looked up towards Sam and caught her looking at him. He immediately stopped talking, looked down, and snuck away. The man was up to something. Sam leapt up, flew through the stampeding riot, and chased down the short man. The man stealthily blended into the crowd before running uptown. He took a few turns, then eventually stopped at an alley. He was still gathering his breath when he stuck his head out looking for Sam. Out there in the streets, people were crossing hastily. 
The four with strange clothes were nowhere to be seen. He sighed in relief. As he was cautiously eyeing around, someone pat him on his back. He furiously swept his hand and yelled, Go away, or I will... He couldn't finish his sentence when he realized Sam was the one who pat his shoulder, the girl with the magic bell. He quickly cowered and muttered, Who are... are you? Please, please let me pass. As he tried to slip past Sam and wanted to run away, but he could only take two steps when Sam grabbed him and lifted him up like a bunny. His feet wiggled in the air, begging for mercy. Sam turned him around so she could face him and smirk. Talk, or I'll turn you into a pot of gold for these people to tear apart. His face immediately turned pale. He was shaking, but still did not talk. Sam frowned. You don't believe me? She flicked his legs, and it instantly turned into gold. Thinking about how those people could dismember his body, he begged for mercy. I'll talk! I'll talk! Sam let go and put him back on the ground. She looked down at him. Someone gave me money and told me to start a fight. They also told me to steal the treasures. Who? demanded Sam. Sam stared at him. Her raised hand made the tiny man scared out of his wits, and he fearfully said, I really don't know who he is. He's a bizarre man, tall with a black coat. He covered half of his face with the hood and rode a huge black horse. Seeing Sam was not satisfied, he hurriedly added, and and his hand held a scale. He told us, the more chaos, the more money we could have. We? He nodded. Sam kicked him once and let him go. The man restored his legs and scrambled. It was just a spell. What he saw was an illusion of himself turning into gold. Sam went back and gathered the team, telling them what she had heard. It turned out the chaos was caused by someone else. Based on your description, I think it was probably the Black Rider? James asked. Those thugs were his men. He must have a safe place to hide like the White Rider, said Gemma. Where do we find him? Sam frowned. The four horsemen were everywhere in this world. They traveled near and far to spread famine, plagues, war, and death. Michael answered. Then he stopped for a minute to think before continuing. The Black Rider causes famine. So wherever people are most without food is the most likely place to have clues we need to find him. Africa! The four shouted as one. Subscribe now to my novels to enjoy a journey of the best mystical, magical, and mysterious stories.